Happy New Year, beginning of a new century, uh, 2020. Um, we find this world at a crossroads, trying to go this way. Hope we get back to one. Anyhow, enough politics. Um, what I'm about to show you is the most luckiest and unluckiest deer in Clark County. The story unfolds in 1995, and uh, I hunted really hard in 95, and come up short because when you're trophy hunting, that's not unusual. Anyhow, the last week of 1995, the on the 27th it was 15 below, the 28th was 10 below, 29th was 8 below, it got up to 10 on the 30th and about 26 on the 31st, which would have been New Year's Eve. But we had 10 to 12 inches of deep snow on the ground also. It was a severe cold December. And uh, it just, you know, it was one of those real, it was a real Iowa winter. Anyhow, to make the story short, I went out on January of 1996 uh, which New Year's Day was on a Monday, and it got up to 34 degrees that day, and I knew that was prime time to go. So when I get to the woods, the deer were trailed up real heavy because they're not going to spend calories wandering around. They're going to the food, back to bedding, to the food, back to bedding, and it looked like a railroad track there. And you're going to see several deer train down that track, and, uh, but everything was completely froze. The trees were froze. It was super, you know, if you dropped a pin, it sounded like a bullet went off. And anyhow, you're going to see this particular buck come down the trail. And I believe it said it uh, on this calendar, it was 4.55 p.m. Uh, and he come down the trail following a whole herd of deer and you're going to see the results and what happened on it everything was so cold when I shot the arrow and it was at 20 yards the whole herd just went to the ground and I was pretty well depressed until I got home and watched the videotape and I seen what happened the deer ducked the arrow severely and the doe behind it fell to her knees I mean clear to her chin on the sound because everything was so close and that's one Achilles heel about hunting when it's that cold because noise does carry if you make a little noise getting into your stand it could probably carry for a mile anyhow this was the buck and to his demise he came back down the same trail a week later on the 8th of January 1996 and when he got to where he got shot at 20 yards away he didn't go through that opening he turned and came straight at the stand and I shot him at 11 yards that evening and I shot him at uh, 515 so it was almost a week to the hour to the day that he came to his demise and you'll see where the arrow creased his back the week prior to that and the hair flew and and then you'll see where I shot him a week later and that buck ended up scoring 140 and 4 eighths Pope and Young beautiful 10 pointer and like I said he was the most luckiest unluckiest buck but that's where persistence and I can't drive that nail home hard enough keep hunting and don't let shortfalls, shortcomings, stop you from going back to the field. Anyhow, that's it. Happy New Year. Happy New Decade 2020 is here. And sit back and I hope you enjoy the video. First day of 1996. Monday night. It's about 30 degrees out. My trail's been heavy, hammered pretty hard. Maybe tonight's tonight. It's a little after four, about ten after four right now. Well, we'll see what happens. I think all the deer are herded up. Got a lot of concentration of tracks right now. 
maybe they'll, maybe they'll all come down the same trail. I won't know in the next 45 minutes. So much for that. That was the shot. I should have killed that deer. Shot right over its back. And again, I, I, I don't believe, I can't believe that. It felt so good. But you've seen it on the camera. It just grazed right over the top of its back. That was about five to five. It just makes you want to puke. Well, I've made them shots so many times. It's just the way it is. I know that's 20 yards to that trail. I can shoot a shot right to that trail. And I won't shoot high. I can't believe that. I wasn't scared or nothing, I wasn't shaking. I knew I had him. You see how calm he walked in? <laughs> I tell you, when it, when it, when the shit falls, it can fall. But there's a good example right there. I should have had a dead deer, but I kept on keeping on and thanks to Debbie understanding and I should have had my deer right there. January 1 at five minutes to five, 1996. I don't know how many was in that herd, but there was only one big one. It's a, I would say, hell, I got it on video. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. Might not even want it on video. But everybody misses, and it looks like I've had my share of missing so far this year. That's twice at 20 yards to give me shots. <sighs> Boy. Yep, Bill, Bob, Irv, Tom, everybody misses. I got proof of it. That was a good, solid, good 10-pointer. Had it been up there pretty good. It didn't bother me how good it was. Heavy beam. Oh, well. That's the way it is, Bubba. This is Monday night, January 8th. I scared some dip three does out of here when I came in there, feeding right underneath this tree. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and set up. It's about 3.30 now, about 25 degrees. Quite a bit warmer than it's been. Well, I guess I got a southwest wind 
Got a lot of west now. I hope I don't get busted tonight. Let's see what happens. No bucks coming through. I don't know. But I know one thing. I could have very well shot over the top of that deer. They weren't very tall when they went through there. See that weed right in there? They were taller than the tallest weeds right there. I shot right over the back of it. sure that big buck's dead. baby. Look at that. Nice 10 pointer. Beautiful 10 pointer. This late in the season, he's a tremendous 10 pointer for me. He'll look good on the wall. Oh boy, I hunted hard. Oh man. I gotta get him scunned out here. Get him on up home. This, this is my best book by far. Double brow time. 
Uh, got a little nubbin busted off here, but that's all right. He's a good buck. That's a good 10 pointer for late season 10 pointer. That's an excellent, that's an excellent book, regardless of whether it's late season or early season. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, well, we're gonna get him scut out. He come right on it. This is the one I missed last week. I thought somebody got him. Nobody got him. I got him. I got him. So, he's a tremendous buck to me. To tremendous. I just never quit. Never quit. I see all Miles Keller and them guys kill them deers. Just never say no and never quit. He he's not the biggest buck, but he he's one nice buck for January 8th. I missed him on January 1. Couldn't kill one in 95, had to wait till 96. That's what Chuck Kierton told me. He busted this and off, but that's all right. He's still a tremendous, tremendous deer to me. All right. Eat down for the count. <laughs> he was the last one to come down the trail. I thought he was dead. Oh, I feel blessed on this deal. I cherish this moment. Just last week, I was really in the dolls bill. Well, I better get some get some pictures taken oh man had a southwest wind and I was east of the trail and he come down on a headwind and he, he wouldn't go by the trail he wouldn't go right where he where I shot at him last last week he wouldn't go by that's gonna really be interesting I'll get to see the wound on his back yeah you can see the wound on his back right there yeah you can see I cut his back right there that's amazing right there's where I sliced his back last week Still got the slice, the broadhead slice on it right there. That's the same book. Yeah. He down, he's mine. Thank you, Lord. I really, really, oh, I just feel higher than a kite right now. Oh boy. I cut his back pretty good there last week. Well, I better take some pictures and get him out of here. Right, right there's where I shot him at. Right there, I don't know. Well, yep, that opened that hole up pretty good. And like I said, right there, right there is where it went over his back last week, right there. It got cut right across his back. <laughs> uh, exactly a week from the day. Shot him last Monday, turned around, shot him again. I don't know if a lot of people would have that much faith getting in that stand. Like I said, I scared out three deer when I went into that stand at, at three o'clock. And it took two and a half hours, and two and a half hours later, uh, I killed him. Uh, I thought he was a little bigger on mass. I knew he was a good clean 10 pointer. I knew he had tall brow tines. Uh, uh, he's, he's my best trophy to date. Boy, and he's in skinny. I mean, he's ran down big time. But like I said, this is January 8th. So if you can find it within you and if your job is conducive to let you go hunting every day and you've got a good old lady and a good kid and they don't mind you spending more time in the woods than you do with them, you can do this. But buddy, when you strap it on to do it, it's going to take everything you got and more. It'll bust 99% of the people. As far as Miles Keller, I can see right now it's possible a man like him with his knowledge and probably where he hunts at, you can do this year after year. But you've got to have perseverance and you've got to have faith and you got to be able to have some marksmanship, especially at this late in the season. So I shot some arrows this afternoon. I, did, I failed to do that last week. I thought I was shooting good enough and see what the result was. But a week later, I mean, they're hit. If you notice them two hits, that hit and that hit, they're right dead center of the deer. It just one was too high. So uh, I was shooting straight. Might have been a little too high. He might have spooked. But we got him on tape, and now we've harvested him a week later. So I want to get him out of here and get him on home so everybody else can see him and enjoy him. I'll tell you what, that's my greatest trophy right there. That is my greatest trophy to date. I mean, you know, we only got two days left in the season. It, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, and uh, it's just a tremendous feeling. You can't quit though. You can't quit until the season's over. Don't take your stand out. Don't get. Don't take yourself out of the woods. Hunt every minute you can, because you just never know. I, I was almost going to get down on a stand tonight, and I just stayed on, and here he come. It, uh, oh man, I'm feeling great. Let's go home. It got it. It got the job done. Almost got it done January one, but he ducked. But that whole. That hole and that hole are right in the mid, mid of the deer. Right in the middle of the deer. Exact aim, exact the same spot. That's seven inches from the center of that hole to the top of his back. So this was seven inches lower than that. 
and uh, that's what the difference was. But that did cut clear through there, poke two holes in the hide, and uh, was an almost. So I got to shoot that deer twice in 1996. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, better keep on scanning him out. Got everybody in here doing stuff. I almost cut it in strips. Mom took it off the bone. And over here, making it run through the hamburger. Riding it up. Hey, hi, Mom. Uh -huh. So that's the end of the deer. From field to table. <laughs>